My name is Jeanette Rumsey. I'm the Marketing Manager for AccuData, and I'll be moderating your webinar today. And I'd like to thank you for joining us. We sure appreciate you taking the time uh, to be with us for our Travel, Tourism, and Marketing Tips and Trends webinar. You can submit your questions throughout the presentation today, but we will cover those at the end of the session. Please use your question and answer panel within GoToWebinar, and you can submit your questions there. If you do have a question that we have not covered, you can email that to info at accudata.com for a prompt reply. You can also call your Accudata representative at 800-732-3440. And please make sure you stay tuned for a special offer exclusively for uh, today's webinar attendees. And we'll go ahead and pick up here on the current slide with an introduction to today's presenters. Celeste Panacho, Senior Marketing Consultant, and Bethany McKay, VP of Business Development. Celeste has been with Acadata since 2007, and her favorite travel destination is the Caribbean or anywhere that is hosting a sporting event. And Bethany has been with us an astounding 17 years, and her favorite travel destinations are the beaches or anywhere her RV can take her. So at this point, Bethany, I will go ahead and turn things over to you. Thank you, Jeanette. Welcome, everybody. We're excited you could join us today to talk about one of my very favorite subjects, travel. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a few different things. First, we're going to discuss some travel and tourism trends, talk about what type of tourism is going on out there in the world right now so we can figure out how to best message them. We're going to figure out about targeting prospective travelers, what kind of data is available out there for you to target those travelers appropriately. We're going to discuss a little bit about working with client data. If you're working with travel agents, or you're a travel agent yourself, or you're an agency or direct marketing company working with customer data, there are a lot of options to gain information from that customer data and augment it. And then we're going to talk about how we can create relevant messaging for different audiences, different groups of people based on ages and incomes and social uh, places they are in their life. You want to talk to them a little bit differently as their interests are different. Hi, this is Celeste, and thanks again for attending this webinar. So let's talk a little bit about travel. Travel is getting more and more exciting, and when you look at the latest travel trends, it, it's easy to see why. While resort vacations, endless rounds of golf, and lounging by the pool will always be in demand, a new type of traveler is on the move and looking for adventure and excitement when planning their next vacation. Let's get started by looking at trending destinations for Americans. Let's start with the domestic travel destinations. Domestic travelers are speaking loud and clear. After this very, very long winter, warm and sunny beachy locations of all the rage. Let's talk about California, Texas, and Florida. They're trending as the top destinations. It's no surprise to any of us. Plenty of sunshine and beaches, as well as some great amusement parks to enjoy with your family. Who doesn't want to spend a week laying in the sun drinking pina coladas? For those travelers who would rather plan an international vacation, the statistics show consumers are staying closer to home and choosing destinations like Mexico and Canada as their top choices. These destinations are easy to get to and considered to be safe by most travelers. But it's the emerging destinations that are most appealing to our adventure-seeking travelers. Look at these international hotspots. The Balkans and Southeast Europe, French Polynesia and the Maldives, Milan, great place to visit, South Africa and Myanmar. All right, next we're going to talk about some different types of travel that have kind of popped up. So back before 9-11, travel was big. There was tons of it going on. And then, of course, when the economy fell and travel was kind of a bit restricted, people were a little nervous to go places, all these different types of interests and, and types of tourism kind of popped up. And now these are kind of the way in which people are traveling. So let's talk about a few of these. Um, adventure tourism. This is where people are going into a remote area. They want to be immersed in a cultural experience. They're not just going on a regular vacation and kind of popping around a city and, and looking at things. They're actually diving in, going out, zip lining through the jungle, um, maybe staying in a small tent listening to the monkeys around them in the, in the forest. It requires some physical activity. This is not your lay on the beach kind of vacation. 
dark tourism is another type that's kind of interesting. Um, they, people want to go and learn about things that have been in history, um, specifically things maybe relating to disasters or tragedies. Think about people wanting to go to New York City and go to the World Trade Center. Think about people wanting to go and learn about history by maybe visiting a concentration camp or something like that. Ecotourism, which I'm sure everyone has heard of, is a big, big deal right now. There are a ton of different types of ecotourism kind of trips where you can go, you can support conservation efforts, you can go in, check out a place that's endangered, something like the Great Barrier Reef. People are nervous that that may not be around forever, or the Galapagos Islands where they can see you know, animals that perhaps won't be around for a long time. Educational tourism is another. Think about when you were in high school and you had a foreign exchange student come to your school. Think about the same type of program, except created for all age groups, not just for those in school. You can go, you can live in a foreign place, learn their language, their culture, and be immersed kind of in learning all about what they do and how they live their lives. Medical tourism, you may have heard about in the news, different types of stories floating around about that, some good and some bad, but it's actually quite a big chunk of tourism. People are going to other countries to pursue medical procedures at a lower cost. Think about cosmetic surgeries and things like that. Paranormal tourism is another biggie. There are tons of places around the country and outside of our country that you can go and learn about some history, do ghost tours. Think about places like St. Augustine where you can go and learn about the pirates that once walked the same streets that you're walking on, go through the graveyards and take pictures of orbs and things like that. Sports tourism, something I know not a lot about because I am not a sports girl, but a lot of people out there are. You can go and go to a sporting event in a particular city and then have an entire package built around that to explore the city, have other activities and things to do. Travel trends. So we know we travel, travel is a going and why, but now let's look into the trends that are changing the way we travel, and the key words are cultural immersion. Travelers want to be enveloped by the sights and smells of the destination they have chosen, and this impacts everything from where they sleep and eat and, and how they play. Let's talk about a few of those. Unique accommodations. From individual rooms to whole houses, travelers can stay in homes of authors, retro trailers, and Europe with the help of someone like Airbnb. Well, BeMate, another site, offers rental apartments that are associated with hotels to offer guests extended services. As Bethany discussed earlier, there are many different types of vacations available, such as dock tourism. Can you imagine staying in the home of the notorious Lizzie Borden? Yes, there is a bed and breakfast museum based on Lizzie Borden's life. Or stay in the home of a famous author, let's say Ernest Hemingway. Another travel trend is authentic meals. There are sites like Eat With and others that will offer travelers the opportunity to have a famous chef prepare, prepare meal exclusively for them when traveling to an exotic destination. So those individuals can couple the, the travel with a planned meal. Another travel trend is custom excursions. There is, there are even sites that can tailor a custom and unique vacation for you. Let's say, for example, you would like to travel to Trinidad and while there take private steel drum lessons or travel to China and learn how to become a, a Chinese dancer. Chinese dancer. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much, <laughs> Bethany. I was thinking of a fortune teller. Thank you very much. So all of these new travel trends of um, lending different opportunities towards the travel industry. That is very interesting. When you speak about authentic meals, I can't get Anthony Bourdain out of my head. I just imagine him going to all these amazing places and having all these different food experiences. Uh, next, we're going to talk just a little bit about some travel trends regarding technology. And the big takeaway from this is that there are just a ton of mobile apps out there that allow consumers and travelers to make their trip easier. Whether it is that they are apps they can book their travel on immediately, right on their smartphone, which is climbing up to, it's like 25% now and they're anticipating it growing to 35% of all bookings happening on a mobile device, which is incredible. Um, there's all sorts of technology now being installed in airports where when you're walking from gate to gate, it can ping you and tell you where you're at. It can tell you where services are around you. And I would say the takeaway from this is when you talk to 
your prospects and different customers about travel and you're making offers, including references to some of these apps and different ways in which they can make their travel easier is going to be enticing to some of these different groups that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So next we're going to talk about how you can identify new travel prospects if you're looking for a campaign for someone and they don't have customer data, there's a ton of options out there to identify travel prospects. But then also we're going to talk about working with customer data. So customers who maybe have traveled in the past, um, who are signed up for a travel newsletter and things like that, there's a lot of things that can be done with that customer data to help you in your marketing efforts. So first we'll touch on how to identify these travel prospects. This is just kind of a small sampling of some of the different types of lists available. So depending on who you're trying to target, what the ultimate offer is, what type of a vacation you're marketing, um, you can identify different types of interests. People who've actually raised their hand or self-reported on a survey that they have an interest in a particular type of travel. For instance, casinos, gaming, gambling, or cruise travel. Maybe they've indicated they've taken a cruise in the past or that they're likely to take a cruise in the future. There's also a ton of information available on more specialty lists, uh, where, whether you're looking for people who are interested in traveling to a particular place or if you're looking for people who are interested in a specific type of trip. You can search and find those. The, the possibilities there are really endless. Something that is um, a great kind of add-on to what I just spoke about is when you're looking for different types of interests. So let's use cruise, cruise interest for this example. When you go to a file, say Axiom or Epsilon or Compact or Experience, you can pull a record down that is the person who self-reported on a survey that they are interested in a cruise vacation. And one vendor is going to have a particular amount of records that fit the criteria you're looking for. Once you pull those down, there are other databases available we have uh, licensed and we house here that we could go into and find unique records. They're not going to be the same records you pulled from the first file. We're going to go to the second file and find unique to that, and the third file, and the fourth file. By the time we get done with that process of passing these files against one another, all the while looking for the same demographic and the same interest in cruising, you can get up to 20% lift using unique records from each of those files. This is also very important for people who have always used a particular file. So if someone has an affinity to Experian and they've been using Experian file for travel interest categories for a very long time, Sometimes it's a great suggestion to them to say, you may want to look at what other files out there have similar records that you haven't been mailing to to get a fresh list, new prospects, and hopefully new responders to that particular offer. This next slide is actually going to give you some numbers to back up what I just spoke about. So this is that source plus finding more consumers that fit the criteria you're looking for by looking at multiple files. In the, these cases, you can see Casino, Cruise, and International. There's a single source count nationwide for people who are interested in a casino travel. There's 12 million, almost 13 million records. But if you actually go and do the Source Plus process and pull down records that are the same from other databases, you can add 4.7 million new records to that campaign. While we would love for everybody to be mailing that many records, it's not always the case. But when you look at a particular region or market, so maybe you're looking to market to people in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it's a great idea to run this against multiple files and get that lift. Same thing with the cruise travel and the international travel. You can see how many additional records we were able to provide when we ran it through that process. Okay, in the next few slides, we're going to talk about working with your client's existing data and how our solutions, solutions such as hygiene, enhancement, modeling, and multi-channel marketing can increase deliverability and increase your ROI. Let's start with hygiene. We have numerous hygiene products available that can be applied to your existing client file. For example, let's say you're working with a timeshare organization. As you know, the timeshare industry decreased dramatically when the economy took a turn for the worse. Now that the economy is becoming stronger, the timeshare industry is also rebounding. Here's some examples of how we can take an existing timeshare file that may not have been marketed to in a few years and enhance that data 
to be used for current marketing efforts. Address standardization. We can address all those addresses on their client file, which will increase postal deliverability. NCOA, the National Change of Address, which will with sorry, we want <laughs> National Change of Address. We want to find the most current address of our existing clients. We want to mail to those clients, and if they have moved, we want to obtain their new address. Identifying vacant, vacant addresses. We certainly do not want to mail to a vacant address and waste postage and mail pieces. Others include deceased suppression and do not call suppression. All right, next we're going to talk about enhancement. So when you have that customer data, it could be people who purchased in the past or had an interest in the past, signed up for a newsletter, as I mentioned earlier. Maybe you only have maybe name and address information and a little bit of information that you captured based on the client interaction. RFM data, the la you know, recency, the last time that they traveled or interacted with the company. Frequency, how often did they used to travel? Is that something that was captured on that database? You know, monetary, are these big spenders on vacations or not? So you can tailor your message to different people in different ways. But in addition to that client provided data, we can go in and append as much information as really possible. There are thousands of elements that can be added to a client file. We can add date of birth, age, income. Discretionary income is a great one for travel offers. Not just income, because sometimes income doesn't tell the whole story, especially with an older crowd. You can also look at net worth. Is there a presence of children in the household? Maybe you should be marketing to these folks based on family-type vacations instead of a vacation that would be more for adults. What are their travel interests? Other ways that you can connect with them and segment their file. You want to be able to version your offer. So if you're marketing to somebody on this list that is you know, 55, the imagery and pictures on the mail piece may want to look like someone their age and in their stage of life versus sending them a mail piece that looks like someone that doesn't represent them. Next, we're going to talk about multi-channel marketing. As you know, multi-channel marketing is proven to yield higher response rates than a single-channel marketing campaign. Next, I'll discuss some of our popular solutions. Email appending. Let's say you have a large cruise industry client and they have a postal file. However, they would like to market to their client via email. We can append email addresses to those postal records. Now your client is able to send a direct mail piece and follow up with an email campaign. This will allow your client to capture those individuals, such as the millennials that may be more responsive to an email offer, or maybe those baby boomers who would like to get both a direct mail piece and an email offer before making their final decision. Email verification. Let's say your client does have emails on their file. We can verify if those email addresses are still valid by using our proprietary email verification system. It will allow us to run those emails through our system and provide back a file of codes that will flag each record and tell if the individual email address is valid, invalid. It may be a, a domain that accepts all emails. After we run it through that system, we can actually use our email reactivate solution to append new emails to those invalid addresses. What we would do is take any of the invalid addresses and follow up, append new email addresses. Therefore, the list will be appended with additional emails for multi-channel marketing. Other solutions include email match and deploy services as well as online display advertising. All right, let's talk a little bit about modeling. A lot of people get very nervous when you say modeling or you talk about analytics. There's a lot of people who have a bit of a concern when it comes to that. They think it's more complicated than it is. And honestly, modeling is one of the best things that anybody can do when they have customer data especially when they have information within that customer data about who's on the file. Uh, we can take customer data and run it through a very basic descriptive profile. It's going to come back and it's going to tell you about 25 different demographics that are the makeup of that file. What percent of your file fell into a particular age group? What percent fell into a particular income group? You can use that information to enhance your targeting, find new customers that look just like the ones that you already have. The next piece is a response model or predictive model. When clients have data that has, we've mailed to all these people, they are, they are the people we've marketed to, but they have not responded, 
And then within that file, they have people who did respond. They raised their hand, they replied, they signed up, they did some activity. We want to find more people that are the responders. So we can take both of those data sets, compare and contrast them, figure out what demographics really make people move in one direction or the other, and then score prospect data or even the client file to identify those that are predicted to be the most either responsive or buyers or whatever that particular person is looking for. It is a great way for people to take their budget and spend it on the most useful targets, the people who are most likely to respond. So while modeling, sometimes people think, well, that's going to cause me to mail less pieces or print less pieces. That isn't always the case. It may have you print or mail less pieces to one particular audience, but that budget that you didn't waste on non-responders can be used to buy more prospect data or market to your other types of customers in different ways. So next we're going to talk about messaging. And all this data talk and all this modeling and all of this other stuff is awesome. Data is fabulous. The creatives are fabulous. But you have to speak to different groups of people the way that is going to move them to act. You want them to respond. The offer you send and the way you speak to them needs to be relevant to what their interests are, their stage in life, and what's going to make them press the button or dial your number to, to schedule a conversation or book a trip. So first, let's talk about the senior group. Uh, we have on here age 70 plus. A lot of people consider this 65 and over. Um, so whatever you determine your senior market to be, these are folks that are not just sitting around the house, you know, letting time pass them by. They're living longer. They feel younger. They're much more active these days than they used to be in the past. They've got freedom. They've got time. They're retired, and their children are grown. So they're interested in giving back to their communities. They want to talk to people who can make good quality recommendations to them about the types of travel they may want to take. Some of the biggest pieces of how to speak to these folks are going to be talking to them, to them about different types of educational travel. For this age group, that's a big one. Volunteerism, they enjoy getting out and being able to help in their communities and around the world. They're very active. Multi-generational travel is a big one. These are grandparents. They have children and grandchildren that maybe they don't get to see them as often as they would like. Maybe they like to schedule trips and everyone goes together and they all enjoy one another's company while they're enjoying the area that they're in. Uh, in this age group, you're always going to have a few medical concerns. You want to keep in your messaging, if it's an all-inclusive resort that you're marketing and there is a nurse on staff, you might want to make mention of that when you market to these folks so they have a comfort level that if they're there and something should happen, they will be safe and taken care of. They want to talk about personalized travel. They want to have face-to-face -face support. Up to 80% of people over 66 still prefer to pay in person or by writing a check. So up to 80%, that's a lot of folks who really want to still have that face-to-face -face interaction or at least telephone. When they dial a number, they want to be able to speak to somebody. You want to put that in your messaging to them so that they feel confident that they'll be able to reach a live human. There's also some online and offline resources you'll want to provide to them so they can feel confident when they research what they're doing and they make payments that they're actually going to the right place. Boomers, or as I like to say, boom, baby boomers, as I fall into that category, ages 51 to 69. As boomers, we're all trying to balance luxury vacations while staying within our budgets. As we're at that age, we're planning for retirement, and we're always looking for great values at low prices. It's important to us to have a great vacation, but also a great price. Boomers are a great audience for travel authors, as most of us are still working, but we have more free time as we're usually empty nesters and do not have as many daily family obligations. We have time to just travel, and we also have a little bit of money to travel with. Boomers are also a great audience for multi-channel marketing, as we're receptive to both traditional marketing, such as direct mail, but also very receptive to digital marketing, such as email. We all like to get a mail piece. We like to get and fail a mail piece. But when followed up with an email that we can view different websites, we can look at different um, options, it's, we are very, very receptive to that. With marketing to boomers, talk to them about travel with a purpose, such as educational tours or ecotourism tours. Boomers have taken the traditional vacations, such as cruises or theme park vacations. Now they're ready to explore new sites. 
adventure travel. We're still young and adventurous. We want to zip line. We want to go to the uh, rainforest. Multi-generational travel is another great um, area to, to market to. Now that they're empty nesters, they're looking forward to spending time with their families. And a great time to do that is well on vacation. Multi-generational travel is a great offer. Relaxing and rejuvenating. OK, as I mentioned earlier, most boomers are still working, at least part time, and when on vacation, prefer to relax. Statistics show 50% of boomers surveyed cited the best part of vacation was to get away from normal everyday life, and that includes relaxing. So again, it's so important to segment, segment your database before marketing. All right, the next generation X, which is where I fall. <laughs> so I can tell you, I'm busy. I have a young family, I have soccer, I have all sorts of things going on. I'm saving, I'm buying houses, I'm doing all these things. So when I receive a marketing piece for travel, there are some things that are going to be more interesting to me and my generation that might be different from the ones we've discussed already. You want to talk to generation folks, uh, generation X folks about family vacations. I just saw a commercial um, on TV yesterday for beaches, and it showed the mom and dad having time out on the beach for a massage while the children were being cared for, and then they all got together and had a great time on the beach together. Those types of vacations are going to be key for Generation X. The all-inclusive, the spa retreats for the parents to get away and have a little bit of time to relax and not have the constant mom and dad questions. Uh, cost savings and available discounts. Everybody is spending a whole lot of money on a whole lot of things. They want to take vacations, but they want to make the best of their money, the best of their budget. So including cost savings and identifying available discounts to this type of, of prospect is going to be key. You also want to include all the extra services that are going to be within the travel you're offering and any online booking tools. Uh, Generation X is going to want to do some online research. Millennials, the big buzzword, ages 18 to 34. Millennials are more likely to spend money on experiences. For example, they like to take cruises, but when that ship hits port, they want activities and experiences such as scuba diving, four-wheeling, cliff diving, and zip lining. We listen to a lot of a lot of the younger people we work with here at Accudata, and they talk about the vacations they're taking. They are all they are all experience something different, such as four wheeling and even rock climbing. Millennials are connected at all times. They use their smartphones and tablets and are heavily influenced by social media and digital advertising. I talked earlier about multi-channel marketing and millennials are our target. Interesting statistic is that fifty seven percent of millennial travelers post pictures on social media sites daily or even hourly while on vacation. Being a baby boomer, that seems absolutely crazy to me, but that's what the millennials are doing today. So when marketing to millennials, what do we do? It's important to utilize the digital channels as millennials are more responsive to email and digital display than to traditional channels such as direct mail. Talk to them about adventure and international travel, group travel, online booking options and travel apps, Hotel services, public transportation. Millennials spend a lot of time, and they're interested in the details. What does the hotel have to offer? What restaurants are in the area? What types of transportation are available when we get there? Loyalty and reward programs. Millennials are loyal to their brand, and that includes their loyalty and reward programs, which are easily monitored through their smartphones and devices. Again, when we talk about marketing to millennials, not just in the travel industry, we have to think multi-channel marketing, we have to think email, and we have to think digital display advertising, because that's where we're going to reach that generation. All right, so all this travel talk has me personally looking forward to going on vacation, and I hope I can schedule one soon. So as we've kind of said throughout, Relevant messaging is a very, very important piece. We can help you find the data. We can help you clean the client's data, augment it, do a whole lot of things. But the creative and the offer really need to be relevant to the type of audience that you're speaking to. So I hope all of this information is going to help you with that. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit just about AccuData in general. Um, we are, we've been doing this for 25 years. When it comes to data, targeting, prospecting, demographics, We've been addressing client challenges in that space 
through innovation and service for a very long time. We understand that direct mail really performs at its best when the audience is highly targeted and when the message is relevant. Can't say that enough. We can also apply a lot of industry-specific and vertical-specific knowledge toward the creation of a customized audience-appropriate solution. Today we spoke about travel and tourism. There are a whole bunch of verticals that we have expertise in, and we can help with those as well. So I'm going to pass this back over to Jeanette, who can talk to you about the offer and wrap up. Excellent. Thank you both so much. I really appreciate all the great information you shared. I, too, am looking forward to my next vacation. I can't wait. Uh, but before we go ahead and get to your questions today, I'd like to extend to each one of you an exclusive offer uh, just for our webinar attendees today. And that is for you to uh, receive a free snapshot descriptive profile report. This can be run on your own customer database. Or if you're representing a client of your own, we can certainly do it on their database as well. But Snapshot is a descriptive profile that's going to give you lots of great information and really paint a picture of what those current customers are like. And it can be so useful when it comes to making your marketing decisions, as well as for targeting uh, new prospects that look just like your current customers. So to get your Snapshot descriptive profile, again, that's free for you as an attendee today. Please go ahead and contact your Acadata account representative to get started, or you can email info at acadata.com, and we can pass that request along to your account rep. So now I'd like to go ahead and have Bethany and Celeste address your questions. We've had several questions that have been submitted already, and I certainly appreciate you doing that. So let's go ahead and get started. And Bethany, I think this first question will be for you. Um, we have an attendee that would like to know where our prospect travel data comes from. Sure. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we work with a lot of vendors. We have um, five nationally compiled databases in-house and then have a, a wealth of additional files that are offline. Generally, each different compiler has a unique source that feeds in for the travel data. Most of this is usually coming from self-reported data direct from the consumer via surveys, questionnaires, online registrations, and different types of travel purchases as well. So buying activity is also built into that. Perfect. Now, Bethany, I know that we talked about some different types of general travel, like interest in RV vacations or timeshare vacations. Are there any types of specialized files that allow us to see where people may be interested in going or how they may be interested in getting there? Yes, absolutely. So outside of the more compiled files, there are specialty files and managed files as well. Generally, the price on these types of files is a bit higher because they are much more specialized. They have more proprietary sourcing that builds in this data. They have more specific types of selects. On the compiled files, you might be able to get interest in traveling by a particular way, cruise, et cetera. And then on a more managed or specialty file, you might be able to identify that people would like to take a trip to a particular region or have indicated um, an interest in going on a particular type of vacation, adventure, et cetera. OK, great. That's wonderful. OK, um, our next question. Celeste, I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. OK, um, our rep or, I'm sorry, our attendees saw on our list of different prospect data a likelihood to cruise select, and they'd like a little bit more information on that. Okay, the likelihood to cruise select is based on a propensity model. This model for the consumer base is, is a consumer-based model, scored model. I am so sorry. <laughs> this is a propensity model that scores a consumer base on the likelihood that they would take a cruise. Each household is ranked with a score from 1 to 99. A score of 1 is very high indication that a consumer would take a cruise, whereas 99 is a very low indication that the consumer would take a cruise. We take into effect age of the individual's household, presence of children, net worth, and a lot of different variables that create a model, scores an, it creates an algorithm, and they score the database. Perfect. Thank you so much. OK, we've got our next question in. And Bethany, I'm going to go ahead and give this to you. This pertains to Snapshot, and uh, we have uh, one of our attendees that has a small travel agency, and they are concerned about how many records they would need to run a Snapshot report. Sure. We can run a Snapshot on as few as 500 records and as many as 100,000 records. When you have 500 records going in, there is a certain percentage that will match. So you won't get a 100% match as long as 
the match rate is high enough on a smaller quantity like 500, the profile will run as expected. If you have a lower match, we might want to look at trying to increase that 500 number to a little bit higher so that when you get your matches, you still have enough data to look at and profile and be able to give you back the report. Okay, fantastic. All right, um, now I've got another question. Uh, this is actually about Source Plus. And uh, Celeste, I'm going to go ahead and pass this to you. Uh, this pertains to email addresses. And do we have the ability to uh, use email addresses with Source Plus? Well, let's start by saying I can see you're thinking and, and uh, the future talking about multi-channel marketing. I like to hear that. Um, in this case, no, we do not have email addresses available on our Source Plus database. However, as I discussed during our um, hygiene uh, portion of the, the webinar, we do have a service which would be an email match and deploy, where we would take the Source Plus database, match it to a consumer email file, and then we could deploy your email message for you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So here's a great question that has just come in. And this is actually really relevant to today's privacy concerns. So we have an attendee that would like to know how they can use some customization and personalization without uh, risking a, a privacy issue. So we talked about versioning of mail pieces and messaging. But we don't want to do anything that's going to you know, cause someone who gets a mail piece to go, oh my gosh, how did they know about me? Uh, so Bethany, could you maybe address how we can work with versioning that wouldn't be anything uh, that would cause concerns for the recipients of our mail pieces. Sure. So when you're creating a, a mail piece that's going to go out to a particular audience, depending on what type of data you pulled, if it was self-reported interest or income and things like that, you never want to specifically say, hi, you know, consumer, we know you've indicated an interest in this. You want to speak to them as if it's very inferred. You, you know, do you like cruise travel? You may want to ask them the question that you know in their mind the answer is going to be yes. Drive them to think the way you want them to think with the information that you know and kind of plug that in. Weasel words. If, you know, if you like to do this, then, you know, click here if it's an email or call this number, that kind of thing. You don't want to ever really say, I know you have these types of demographics or these interests makes people Excellent. uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, Celeste, I'm going to direct the next question to you. This is regarding an email append. And we have an attendee that would like to know how long it would take to append email addresses to their file. And they have approximately 12,000 uh, postal addresses currently. Thanks, Jeanette. Typically, it would take approximately 48 to 72 hours to append email addresses to either your consumer file or your business file. But take into effect that this is based on the condition of the file. If we have to do some pre-hygiene, such as an NCOA or a CAS certification to your file, or an address standardization, with it, we could allow an extra 24 hours. But typically, 48 to 72 hours. OK, fantastic. And it looks like we've had one more question that's come in. And Bethany, I'll go ahead and direct this to you. Uh, this is from one of our attendees who currently uses Aculeads. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Accolades, that is our online count and order system, which allows you to go online and run counts and place orders for data and data-related services. And Bethany, they're asking where they can find the travel selects among the consumer files. OK, sure. So when you get into Accolades, on the first page, you'll see all the different databases that we allow you to run counts against. And the consumer files are going to be up at the top. Each one of those consumer data vendors is going to have different travel selects. I would encourage you to go in and look at each of the vendors to see who might have the specific information you're looking for. One may actually have more records than another. So if it's a smaller area and Source Plus is not a, a tool that would make sense for this, you may want to look at each of them and run a comparison count to see who has what. The easiest way for you to go in and find the travel selects once you've indicated the database you want to run your count in is to use the search. So you choose your database, you go into the demographic section that's on the left side, and you're going to enter travel into the search for field. 
when you click find, any select that has the word travel in it is going to show, and you'll be able to read over those descriptions and decide which, which select is going to be the one you want to build into your account. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, everyone, I think that's the end of our questions today. If you did happen to put in a question that we did not address, we will certainly get in touch with you uh, following the webinar and make sure that you get all of the information you need. And at this point, we'll go ahead and conclude today's session. But if you are interested in receiving more information on supporting travel and tourism clients with data solutions, we would love the opportunity to have a conversation with you. So please feel free to contact your account representative uh, via phone or email to info at acudata.com. And again, thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.